In the dry and barren Arabian desert, one of the most advanced countries in the world is doing something that has never been done before. Saudi Arabia is building the unimaginable. They're making the longest desalinated water pipeline network system ever attempted, right in the middle of the desert. Yes, you heard that right. The kingdom is constructing a river in a desert. How ironic, right? The nation has no natural rivers and barely any rainfall. And because of this, they've decided to create a massive artificial river to mitigate water scarcity and shape their future forever. To clarify, this project is meant to be a large-scale network of desalinated water pipelines beneath the desert, and construction has already started. But you might be thinking, how exactly will the people of Saudi Arabia carry out this project? And what would it mean for the country's economy? Well, keep watching, because you're about to find out. First, let's slow down a bit and find out where exactly Saudi Arabia's journey with water began. For context, if you're a good geography student, you probably already know the country isn't landlocked. Despite sharing borders with seven countries, including Jordan, Qatar, and Iraq, they have coastlines along the Red Sea and Persian Gulf. As a result, the country has gone through so many stages over the past decades. In the beginning, they made use of their natural water resources for stuff like farming and the needs of the citizens, but as time went on, things began to change. They turned to the use of something known as ancient underground water, also known as fossil groundwater, and made it their dominant water source. The amazing discovery of this underground water gave Saudi the ability to provide homes, stores, and even factories with a stable water source. At the same time, it greatly boosted the farming sector. Between 1980 and 1994, water usage in Saudi Arabia nearly tripled. Unfortunately, the rapid rise in how much water got used kept depleting the non-refillable groundwater resources. By 1995, about 35% of the groundwater reserves were gone. Let's just say, if the groundwater runs out completely, things would be pretty bad. Imagine a country without any water to drink. So the government, recognizing how fast the country kept consuming water, put measures in place to solve the issue. Now the citizens of Saudi Arabia didn't have to pay for water, it was completely free. Well, up until 1994, when the government started charging a bit. Basically, the government wanted to change things, so they prepared a plan on how to build their own water project. By 2000, the Saudi government cut back on water subsidies, sending a clear message to farmers that it was time to start farming smarter and using water more wisely. A key example of this is in the country's wheat farming. In 1994, Saudi Arabia produced around 2 million tons of wheat. But by 2016, the number drastically reduced to about 765,800 tons, a 79% drop from how much was made in the 1990s. The reason? Water. Wheat is a pretty thirsty plant, and with wheat farming draining the country's scarce water reserves and no rain-fed agriculture to rely on, the government quickly stepped in. For this reason, most commercial wheat fields have disappeared, although a few farmers still grow small amounts locally. Additionally, the whole world knows that Saudi relies on oil to run its economy, as well as a process known as desalination to generate water in the country. Nevertheless, all these methods and techniques won't sustain the country forever. With this in mind, Saudi decided to create a project like no other. So what exactly is this water project? To put it simply, it's the solution to Saudi's water issues. You might be confused because Saudi Arabia doesn't have any natural rivers, and you're right about that. But this isn't a natural river. The country is currently constructing an extensive water system consisting of multiple pipeline projects carrying desalinated seawater from the Red Sea and the Arabian Gulf deep into the country. It's a bold and revolutionary endeavor that's partially being constructed underground, and very few projects of its scale exist. The kingdom is thinking big, and we've got to applaud them for that. Also, the network will become one of the world's most amazing desalination strategies. Saudi Arabia currently produces over 3 million cubic meters of desalinated water daily. 
In addition, the country plans to increase this capacity significantly in the coming years to meet their growing needs. So it's clear that this network is more than just a pipeline, it's a lifeline. And it's one that's not going to dry out in the next couple of years. It's really amazing how this massive network is going to take freshly converted saline water and transport it inland. And what's even more amazing is the great attention to detail that's being put into the project. For one, the reason it's going underground is mainly due to the extreme weather conditions. Saudi Arabia is basically in the Arabian desert, with most of its territory being arid. Sometimes in the summer, the temperatures skyrocket to an insane 43 degrees Celsius, 109 degrees Fahrenheit. The kingdom is hot. So the project is going underground to be protected from the heat and evaporation losses, as well as to shield it from the scorching sun, contamination, and pressure loss. Its width and depth are constructed to ensure a steady flow of water that'll reach even the most arid and harsh regions of the country. Another cool thing about this project is that it has the possibility to provide Saudi with the agricultural self-sufficiency that has seemed impossible over the years. This means that the country could move away from being highly dependent on oil and start cultivating agriculture, strengthening its economy and reducing food imports. The artificial river's pipelines are also made of specialized anti-corrosion pipes. Measuring approximately 2.25 meters in diameter, they'll transport fresh water to all major cities and remote regions. The pipe network, when completed, will altogether stretch thousands of kilometers. It's going to be one of the longest water systems ever made, although it still won't rival a continuous river like the Nile, which supports entire ecosystems in multiple countries. Indeed, the project isn't only concerned with creating a new source of water, but also about pushing the barriers of water supply infrastructure to create something never done before. Saudi Arabia is one of the driest countries in the world. It gets just 50 to 150 millimeters of rainfall each year. That's barely enough for plants to grow. And we haven't even considered the ever rising population that's close to 40 million people. With no natural rivers whatsoever and groundwater reserves that are steadily reducing, the country faces a critical water scarcity problem. And we haven't even mentioned global warming. So it's clear to see that Saudi was in quite a situation and needed to think fast. So the country turned to innovation. We now know that the pipeline project is a vast and complex water transport system powered by desalination. Seawater from the coast is purified and then pumped through a high capacity network of pipelines that stretch deep inland. So let's get into why this water system is being created. The first and most important goal of this water system is to provide the kingdom with a steady and secure water supply. It delivers water to cities, agricultural zones or farms, and industrial areas. In short, it supports a life where nature has made it nearly impossible. Moreover, it not only hydrates millions of people, but also propels the development of new cities and economic zones. Apart from solving the immediate water needs, the artificial river is also a crucial part of Saudi Arabia's larger mission to transform parts of the desert into an agricultural hub. Now that the country has reliable access to water, they're steadily investing in desert agriculture. They want to grow plants and crops in places that are completely barren. Can you imagine turning parts of the desert into lush greenery and vegetation? Their efforts also reduce the dependence on imported food and promote food security. Now, the word desalination was mentioned earlier in the video, and it's something that's heavily intertwined with the pipeline system. To illustrate, it's the process of taking salty water, for example, seawater, and getting rid of the salts and minerals to make it safe to use. After desalination, we can use the water for drinking, farming, or other industries. It's like turning ocean water into fresh, clean water that people and plants actually use. This is super convenient in dry regions like Saudi Arabia where fresh water is scarce. The water used in this artificial river doesn't come from lakes or rain, rather, it flows straight from the sea. And let's not forget that turning seawater to fresh water is the entire point of the project. Two main techniques are used, membrane desalination and thermal desalination. 
Both of these methods have their own unique ways of providing fresh water. They both have what they do to make sure the project succeeds and works effectively. First, let's unpack membrane desalination. Membrane desalination is basically putting seawater through a super fine strainer. However, the strainer is so fine that only pure water molecules can squeeze through the holes. This process is done through something called reverse osmosis. It uses a special semi-permeable membrane to eliminate salts, bacteria, and other impurities. Membrane desalination is really popular nowadays because it's super efficient. Even though it needs energy to make the pressure needed, there are a lot of technological advancements that make it greener and much more pocket-friendly. Moving on, we have another desalination technique which is known as thermal desalination. To put it simply, seawater had a steamy makeover. The salty water heats until it turns into vapor and it leaves the salt behind. Then it gets cooled back into pure, drinkable water. It mimics the natural water cycle, only that it's much faster and inside high-tech machines. Did you know that Saudi Arabia is the world's largest producer of desalinated water, with over 40 desalination plants lining its coasts? Well, now you do. These desalination plants carry out the process of desalination we've already explained. They take water from the Red Sea and produce clean, fresh water. After this, the fresh water gets pumped into the underground river system. Now, all these activities are quite large scale. There has to be a body or some sort of committee managing its activities, and luckily there is. That body is known as the Saudi Water Authority, formerly the Saline Water Conversion Corporation. Imagine living in a huge desert with very little fresh water. Now, imagine needing to give clean water to millions of people every single day. That's the challenge Saudi Arabia faces, and that's where the Saudi Water Authority comes in. It's a state-owned entity that plays a pivotal role in how desalination works in the country. The corporation oversees desalinated water production across the kingdom, ensuring a consistent supply of fresh water to cater to the ever-growing water needs of the citizens and industries. Think of them as the water wizards of the country. They work their magic by building and managing desalination plants all over the country's coastal regions. Additionally, they make sure that the water is clean and safe for drinking, cooking, farming, generally anything that needs water. Yet another of their activities is the distribution of fresh water to all cities, towns, and even far-off villages in remote areas. The body does all this while working to improve technology so desalination becomes faster, cheaper, and better for the environment. In 2022, Saudi Arabia turned a lot of salty seawater into fresh, drinkable water, about 2.9 billion cubic meters in total. That's enough to fill over a million Olympic-sized swimming pools. A big part of this work is done by the Saudi Water Authority, then known as the Saline Water Conversion Corporation, SWCC. They run 27 powerful desalination stations that together make over 3 million cubic meters of clean water every single day. One of the biggest water-making machines in the world is right in Saudi Arabia, too. It's the Jubail desalination plant and was once the largest desalination plant in the world. After its construction in 2009, that record now belongs to the Rabig 3 independent water plant, also located in Saudi Arabia, which produces 600,000 cubic meters of desalinated water per day. Thanks to its massive output, the desalination plant is able to conveniently supply nearly 1 million homes in the neighboring communities. The desalination plants generate so much output for the kingdom, it's a perfect display of the integrated approach Saudi has taken to addressing its water and energy needs simultaneously. Since the kingdom has very few freshwater resources, desalination provides over 50% of its drinking water. This steady supply pushes the development of megacities like NEOM and Riyadh. It also supports tourism and keeps the economy growing. Additionally, it reduces how much water is taken from the fossil groundwater supply, which preserves the country's natural resources and boosts sustainability efforts. 
Without a doubt, the Artificial River Project is a cornerstone in the country's transformation. Not only does it directly fix the country's acute water scarcity, but it's also a way to see what big plans Saudi is making to diversify their economy. By delivering consistent water supply deep into the country, the system builds the foundation for agricultural development on a much broader scale. Expanding domestic food production not only enhances food security but also creates jobs and reduces reliance on costly imports, all of which contribute to building a more balanced and resilient economy. I'll admit that with all the benefits this project brings, one might forget that it's going to have challenges. Arabia's artificial river project is a big leap toward water security in the country. However, it comes with very significant environmental and economic challenges. At the center of this effort is a much broader national issue, and that's the kingdom's historical reliance on a single economic powerhouse, oil. For many years, oil revenues have held up Saudi Arabia's economy. The oil money funds infrastructure, public services, and even international investments. Nonetheless, this dependency puts the nation at risk to fluctuations in global oil prices, as well as the speed with which the world is moving towards renewable energy. Recognizing the risk of remaining chained to an unstable commodity, Saudi Arabia launched Vision 2030. Vision 2030 is a comprehensive national transformation plan to diversify the kingdom's economy and secure a sustainable future for her people. Yet the road to progress still contains obstacles. Desalination uses an awful lot of energy. Moreover, the process produces brine. To clarify, brine is a highly concentrated byproduct of salt that if not carefully disposed of will lead to chaos in underwater ecosystems. Let's also not forget that burning all that oil is a major source of air pollution that damages the environment. For context, Saudi Arabia burns 1.5 million barrels every day to power its desalination plants. That's a whopping 15% of the country's local production. These air pollutants, when combined with toxic brine, greatly impact marine ecosystems, and that comes with unique ripple effects. As a result, poor management of these massive desalination systems could start a vicious circle that damages our environment and has more negative consequences in the long run. Despite these environmental and technical hurdles, Saudi Arabia keeps pushing forward. They're very determined. The government is investing billions of dollars into advanced technologies to make desalination more efficient and eco-friendly. Besides, there's a lot of research going into solar-powered desalination, fixing carbon emissions, and also finding better ways to manage brine. And luckily, they're all part of the kingdom's broader commitment to improve the environment under Vision 2030. To sum up, Saudi Arabia proves to the world, through the creation of a man-made river in the middle of the desert, that scarcity breeds innovation. What's your take on this exciting project? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe for more engineering updates like this.